Hey guys, welcome out to the shop today. We're going to be building some benches for my kitchen. These are going to be made out of 2x4s from your local big box store. It's going to have very simple joinery, just including pocket holes and some glue. The C height is going to be right around 19 inches and the total height, uh, including the back, is going to be about 35 inches total. Now I'm getting these measurements based off of my kitchen table that I've already built about seven years ago. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Now my first two pieces are going to be getting cut at 35 inches in length. Now that I've got my back legs cut, I can go ahead and cut my front legs. Those are going to be 18 and 3 quarter inches tall. Now that we've gotten the front and the back legs cut, we need to make the braces that go from the front to the back legs. We're going to need four of those, and those are going to be cut at 13 and 7 eighths of an inch. Now that we've got all those parts cut out, we can go ahead and start by assembling the sides. All of the pocket holes are going to be getting drilled into these four pieces right here so we'll have a little system set up we'll have our pocket hole jig ready to screw uh, to drill all the holes and then afterwards we'll put them on top of the bench and screw everything together Now that we've gotten all of our pocket holes drilled, we can go ahead and start with the assembly. We'll take a front and a back leg, put it to the side, and then we'll also take two of the pieces that we drilled, we'll put those to the side. So we got the two crosses, and the front and a back leg. We're going to go ahead and start with the top part of the leg first, and this one's very easy to get its location, because you just want to flush it up with the top of the front leg. Let's put on some glue. We'll flush it up into the top, take some screws. Now for my bottom part of my leg, I want to mount it up so that the base of that brace is actually three inches up. We're going to go ahead and make a mark at three inches. And that's where I'm going to have this mounted at. The leg's going to be higher. Now for the back leg, we're going to go ahead and start with the bottom portion first. So we got to make our mark at 3 inches. And at this point, we'll add some glue to both pieces just so that we don't have to try to move anything around. So here's one side all completely assembled. When we go to the other side, instead of laying the pieces down like this, we'll actually have to flip them around like this so that we don't have pocket holes hanging on the outside of your bench. All right, so there we go. We have both of our sides completely assembled. Now what we'll have to do is actually cut the cross braces that go from each side, and then we'll fill in between all of those. Okay, so I have a slight design change. I was originally going to keep everything all nice and square on the back side but after looking at it and sitting on the edge a little bit eh, I don't know if you want to sit in there for a little bit it's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable so I came up with this slanted back slightly it starts at a three inches up from where the base of the seat is and it's gonna be getting a inch cut off at the top 
So I'm just going to have to make that little angle and then I went ahead on the bandsaw and also cut this curve out and then took it to a sanding disc and got the rest of the shape cut for the circle part. So behind the scenes, I got some work done on this. I went ahead and cut the three stretchers right here, the one down there, and also the back one. And those are 70 inches long, and I went ahead and already have attached them and then put in these little cross braces in between each of them this one right here is centered up and then the other two are centered up in between the side and the center one i went ahead and got the back leg reshaped and put a curve on it and then sloped this back a little bit and i also went ahead and stained the whole entire base skeleton because I did not want any of the white pine showing through for when I was going to finish it. So now it is time to go ahead and install the base and the back. So the base and the back are just gonna be regular two by fours. I'm gonna butt these all the way up against the back on the base. And they're gonna come out and they're gonna have a little bit of an overhang so that everything's not completely flush in the front. So I'm going to cut these down to the exact width of the bend. Now that I've gotten all my seat slats cut, I'm gonna go ahead and start drilling all the holes. I've centered it up from top to bottom right here and also came in three quarters of an inch to make it centered on what I'm drilling into. So I'm gonna drill the main hole and then I'm coming back with a bigger bit for the countersink portion and then I'll be using plugs to cover up the holes. After you get this side done, you can go to the other side and push it up and snug it up and get a really nice tight seam line. So now we're moving on to the top and I've got all my pieces cut out for the back slats. Now what I want to do is have a little gap in between the seat and the back. So what I've done is just grabbed another 2x4 off cut, I've put it underneath and I'm going to do the same thing. I'll drill a hole right in here, countersink, and then I'll screw this into the back leg. Well, that's it. It's completely assembled now. Now I just got to fill in the plugs, sand everything down, and then give all of the newer pine a stain and then put a finish on it. All right, so now I've gotten everything all sanded and I went ahead and blew everything off with the air hose. So I now need to go ahead and start applying some of the stain on here and letting it soak in between all these little creases and stuff. I'll flip it upside down and stain the bottom side and everything like that. Making sure that everything that is the pine color gets stained the special walnut color. Alright, here is the bench all stained up. 
everything looks great I got in all the cracks let it soak in there made sure that I had plenty to run in between all of the 2x4s I don't see any white anywhere which is exactly what I wanted it was gonna be tough trying to get some of the cracks like right in there so that's why I stained the base of it first but I'm really happy with how the color is right now. I'm gonna let that completely dry and then we're gonna go ahead and get some coats of clear finish on it. Well, it's been a couple hours now and the bench is completely dry. I've put on four other coats of the lacquer. It dries really quick and that's one thing I really like about the lacquer. The bench is completed now though. I'm ready to move it on inside and get some great use out of it. I think it turned out really well. I like how I ended up using the pocket holes. It made it for a really quick assembly. And then for all the slats, I just screwed those in and it's gonna last a really long time matches our table. I really like how the color turned out. It's really nice and dark and I even like the difference in the darker grain versus the lighter grain. It's a great offset. If you guys enjoyed this video go ahead and give it that thumbs up button and if you have any comments leave them down below in the comments section. Thanks for watching and if this is your first time on my channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday is a project video. Tuesdays are usually vlogs. Every once in a while I try to throw out a quick DIY project that you guys can do throughout the week. So you guys can keep an eye out for some of those. And as always, I will see you guys on the next video.